we are going to bring in Dr. James Schwartz. He is the superintendent over at Avondale School District. Always great to have you with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. And I'll kind of start off with a different question in that, do you believe you're more tech savvy now than you were at the beginning of this crisis? Good morning, absolutely. Uh, absolutely, we have uh, certainly uh, ramped up on our uh, our tech literacy, as I would call it, um, from a from an organizational standpoint. Uh, you, you know, everywhere in the organization has had to resort to new technologies to navigate this COVID environment. Um, in you know, from the classroom to uh, administration, central office. I mean, we've all had to use technology differently and more creatively than we certainly had pre-COVID. I'll tell you what, though. All the updates are driving me crazy. So I think I figure out Snapchat. I think I have Instagram <laughs> down. TikTok, I just watch the videos. I don't post. But I think I have Snapchat down. Then they do an update. And then I have to get a new tutorial from my niece and nephew. And they're college kids, but they're like, really, Aunt Ronnie? But now, even with that um, Zoom, which everyone is using, they keep changing and tweaking their platforms as well. Don't they understand that anyone over the age of 40, we don't like change? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 it is a challenge, that is for sure. Uh, it, you know, for, for those of us that are Gen Xers, uh, yeah, it's a little bit more of a challenge. You know, as Dr. Hill was speaking prior to, to me, you know, it's for the, the, the millennial generation and the Gen Z gen generation, I mean, technology is inbred in them uh, and they, they can navigate these tools uh, far better than, than we can. Um, and they can certainly, when it comes to the updates and those types of things, they're on it better than we are. Yeah, these kids are smart, but at the end of the day, they still need that in-person, face-to-face learning because as much as we love technology and it opens up new worlds for us, it doesn't replace that face-to-face -face human interaction. Yeah, when do I you totally think, agree. will it ever get back to what was normal or will normal be just completely different from here on out? Well, I think normal is going to be different. I don't think normal is going to be what it was pre-COVID, uh, and I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, I think that certainly through, through this, we've learned how to uh, modify and adjust instruction to, I'll say, better need, meet the needs of students. Uh, we certainly have learned how to manage technology a lot more efficiently uh, in our environment. Uh, and how to use technology, frankly, uh, with our, you know, as a, as a supplement to our instruction uh, or as a tool to drive our instruction. So I, I think that through this, we've certainly learned lessons that have changed what normalcy will be uh, from, uh, from that instructional delivery standpoint. Uh, I even think that when we're back in seat, uh, that instruction will be a greater part of the school day. Uh, and I also think that there will be um, greater opportunities for students to uh, to be involved in school technologically. And I, I think that uh, districts from here on out essentially will be offering more of a smorgasbord of remote learning opportunities for students moving forward because there, there will be that demand. I mean, there are students that are flourishing in this remote environment. Uh, and I, I can foresee that many families, even when school is back in seat, they will still want to choose to stay remote. I mean, even post COVID. Um, so I think that uh, in terms of how school districts need to modify and adjust their options for students, that is that new normal is going to be different. So, well, so much uh, of your funding is based on those kids in the seat. So are you worried going, you know, in down the line that some kids are maybe going to um, choose not to come back to mainstream school, edu private public education? Because online learning is really nothing new. 
it's been around for years. It's just new to us in the public education setting. True. Uh, I do think that. I do think there will be, you know, a subset of students that will continue to just learn remotely, um, you know, particularly um, the upper grades, you know, high school age students uh, that are balancing a work schedule and school, uh, you know, a remote schedule can be far more convenient for folks that are juggling work, school, you know, uh, you know multiple commitments. So, uh, you know, I do foresee that that moving forward. And I think school districts, frankly, have to uh, up their game in terms of being able to reorganize themselves to uh, adapt and offer those opportunities to students so that they are not losing those FTEs uh, from, from a funding perspective. And talk about reinventing yourself as a school district when, you know, there's so much to the, the phrase where people say, but this is how we've always done it. And sometimes getting people or even organizations and dealing with unions, people of that nature to change can seem like you're moving mountains. But in this case, because we've had to change those words really no longer apply. And do you think that's going to help make some of these changes permanent for the better down the road? Yeah, I do. I do. I think because some of the, you know, we've always done it this way mentality uh, has been forced to change. And, and, I, and I think that um, certainly, you know, folks, uh, their eyes have been opened and, you know, there has been flexibility that's been forced upon operating in, in this environment. And so I think moving forward uh, to change will, it will affect it more easily uh, in terms of the open-mindedness to change. Dr. James Shore is with us on the Oakland County Megacast joining us today. He is the superintendent of the Avondale School District with us this morning. And uh, Dr. Schwartz, currently, uh, currently many other school districts uh, are continuing to update their return to learn plan their current plans as time goes on sometimes it's month to month month to month sometimes even every every couple of weeks as they get feedback from parents and students and as the response to COVID-19 changes what discussions have been had with the Avondale School District uh, at the administrative level and with staff and students about this and, and what may be some changes that Avondale schools students and, and families experience coming down the pike uh, in the next several weeks or several months sure sure, sure. so obviously the the back in seat planning you know has been something that the district's been working on for months now uh, we've been we've been a a, a hundred percent remote uh, for the first 10 weeks of the school year uh, our board of education back in August had um, had determined that we would uh, spend the first 10 weeks all in a remote fashion. So we've been working really since that point to um, devise plans for, okay, what happens after that 10 weeks? Um, you know, what, what comes after that point? So we've put together plans to, uh, to offer the options for parents that wish to go back in seat to do so. Um, uh, so our planning has been uh, um, looking at uh, how we integrate in seat and also how we continue to uh, offer remote for, for those families that want to stay remote. Uh, so we've had uh, really three, three board meetings where this has been a major topic. Um, and we've received obviously a lot of community input, a lot of staff input uh, via those uh, venues. We've also had a town hall uh, for elementary, a town hall for secondary, uh, in which we further received more input from folks on, uh, you know, on, on the plans going back. Uh, ultimately, our board just a couple of days ago on Monday night had uh, passed um, a motion to uh, have our kindergarten through grade eight students return back uh, on November 16th. Uh, and then our high school students will return back at the end of the semester uh, in January, which would be January 19th. So our kindergarten through eighth grades are on a trimester schedule, uh, which is why that November 16th date uh, lines up with sort of the end of their marking period. 
uh, and then the high schoolers will start uh, consequently at the end of their marking period uh, in January. But um, uh, we, in our surveys, we've sent out several surveys uh, to, to our community and to our staff over the past several weeks. Um, and from a community perspective, in terms of the confirmations of folks coming back, it's really 50-50 uh, in terms of those who prefer to stay remote uh, and those who wish to have their students back in seat. Uh, and so, so with a 50-50 split, essentially, that allows us to bring back students uh, into a seated section or sessions with proper social distancing and, and mask wearing and all the protocols without having to do, uh, you know, necessarily a, a, an AB alternate day or alternate alphabet day type of scenario. Uh, so that allows us to come back to a, a full five day program at uh, elementary. Uh, and then our secondary, our middle school, high school will be back in a, in a four day in seat with a one day remote um, day schedule. So uh, we're just in the midst now of firming up what that schedule will be because now we've got some exchange of teachers and students because we have to devise all new schedules for now to allow for the in-seat uh, uh, students to come back. So there's a lot of scheduling that's gonna happen here in the next couple of weeks to prepare for that November return. And in some cases, uh, students will have a new teacher come November uh, because of that, you know, uh, allowance now of two options. It's got to be so hard to be in your position and to try to weigh all these voices because every parent, every family, every student has a different perspective in what works best for them. And I know that you and your team are working around the clock trying to balance all of these issues and these concerns to come up with the best plan. But knowing that and opening up the schools again, I'm sure that you're going to be prepared for what is already happening at schools across the state of Michigan and the Metro Detroit area in the, in the outbreaks of COVID-19 that are happening. And plus the reporting of that on the state website how is that going to be addressed when you do get students back into the classrooms? So we we have very specific protocols that uh, are going to be utilized, uh, really it's throughout the organization, but um, that are um, devised by the Oakland County Health Department. So we're really under their auspice uh, in their protocols uh, for you know, in terms of, of identification regarding symptoms, uh, in terms of quarantining, in terms of contact tracing, uh, you know, all of those protocols we've uh, we've developed uh, in concert with uh, with the Oakland County Health Department. We have nurses here in the district that are on um, on staff um, that will be uh, helping us with those decision making uh, types of scenarios where we have to send students home. Or, or we have to close a classroom or close a school or so, you know, we've got all of those protocols down pat. I mean, we do expect that we are going to have COVID cases. I mean, we'd be foolish to think otherwise. Uh, we know that we're not immune to that. Um, and we know that sending students back into classrooms um, is a risk, uh, but uh, there's going to be a risk no matter when you decide to do it. You know, there's arguments about, well, you know, why come back now? Why not come back after the holidays? Uh, and then people argue, well, don't come back after the holidays because that's when everybody's getting together and there's a greater chance of, of spread because of everybody congregating for the holidays. So, you know, the bottom line is there, there is no good time. There is no ideal time to bring students back. Uh, there's never a risk-free time. Uh, so recognizing that we have to make sure that our uh, protocols for prevention and our protocols for response are very thorough and uh, you know well thought through and ready to go and 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 we are it helps when you've had time uh, you're, i feel like you're an expert at this now what seven months into the pandemic yeah. Uh, shift, shift, shift again, pivot, pivot, pivot again, uh, seven months into it. And it's good that you have a plan in place. And I'm sure even with that plan in place, when things happen, 
things will still need to be navigated to get you through any type of crisis. Dr. James Schwartz with us here on the Oakland County Megacast, superintendent for the Avondale School District. Anything we didn't touch on that you want uh, the parents or the teachers to know uh, about going forward? No, you know, it, it is, uh, you know, going back to school uh, and, and navigating these the instruction, whether it's it's in seat or it is remote, is is a it's really a, a community effort. Uh, it's really something that we all have to join arm in arm in uh, and support each other with, and, and have patience with. And because, you know, do we have all the answers? No. Can we control COVID? No. You know, can we guarantee that no one's going to get COVID in our plans? No. You know, nor will anywhere you go have that those guarantees or, you know, those lack of, of risks and so on. But understanding that, you know, uh, you know, our community has been very uh, supportive overall and understands the complexity of, of the situations that we're all living in. And although we we sympathize with everybody's inconveniences and how this this disease has really altered people's lives. It's, it's turned, you know, uh, lives upside down. Uh, and it's, it's extremely difficult from a parent perspective and from a, uh, a teacher administrator perspective. Uh, but I think there's a general understanding that, yep, there are a lot of co complexities. Uh, we're going to join arm in arm and we're going to help solve these, these issues as they come up. We're going to provide for the best uh, instruction in the most safe and secure way that we possibly can uh, under the circumstances. And we're gonna um, solve issues again as, as they come up. And, and again, I, I think it's, our community has been very supportive and patient with that and, and will continue to be. And, and, I, and I would ask that people, uh, again, that, that may not understand that to, to you know, reflect upon that, that we, we don't have all the answers and no one does. And, and we're all working to make the best of it. And, and it's a learning experience for all of us. We will learn and we will become better as we go. And uh, having a little grace uh, during this uh, trying time because everyone is trying their best. Thank you so much. Dr. James Sports with us here, superintendent for the Avondale School District. I know you and your entire team are working around the clock as well, trying to navigate th this crisis and doing what's best for the students. So we want to say thank you. And hopefully uh, next summer vacation, you'll get to actually take a very long, very well-deserved vacation to somewhere fantastic.